Peace Callers, Being and Vision. Welcome to the first Peace Callers CD. This recording began as a vision I received as a dancer during my first Sun Moon Dance at the Swannanoa Peace Chamber in North Carolina in 2008. The Peace Chamber at Swannanoa is the 18th Peace Chamber created from the vision of Joseph Real. Joseph is also known as Beautiful Painted Arrow. From the vision Joseph originally received, many dozens of peace chambers have been built around the planet. People who are familiar with Joseph's work and perhaps are involved in the peace chamber communities are the primary audience of this recording. Additionally, I am relying on my life experiences among many communities, including the Sufis, metaphysical, Christian, and Native Americans to inform my views. If you are into meditation, yoga, Native cultures, philosophy, sacred sites, or holistic healing, my hope is that you will find something meaningful in these words. Now, to get into this material, I would like to give you a brief overview of the main sections of this recording. In part one of this recording, I want to share with you the details of the vision I received during the sun and moon dance. This vision contains one interpretation of how being moves from the unmanifest to the manifest. In part two of this recording, we will look at how this vision of being relates directly to the peace chambers. In part three of this recording, we will look at how this vision relates to those who actively orient themselves to embody peace and unity of being. It is when this vision of being is manifested through an individual that such a person may be called a peace caller. And now, part one of the peace callers, the vision of being. Let me start by giving you a vignette of the vision. You see, the sacred being originates in formlessness. Imagine a warm place, a life-giving womb of potentiality. All that exists there is just being, complete, unable to be added to or subtracted from, unable to be improved or degraded. Really, that is the condition inside of all of us. We carry this beingness inside. It is really who we are. From this being, rooted in the unmanifest, is an impulse for expression. Just like a baby who learns to smile and cry and wiggle, the life inside, the great being, because of this impulse for experience and expression, yearns to know itself. And this knowing is done by being, taking on roles and masks, and seeming to be many, though it is always one. So when the being first had the yearning to know itself, it, like a baby, started to make a sound. And many cultures have many words for this sound, from om to ah, to mmm, and others. And this sound then forms patterns, like divine baby talk. And these patterns of being form into waves of being. And eventually, we move from being, to vibration, to sound, to light, and to manifestations of the one, appearing as many. This is the basic process of being. What I want to do next is to retell this process of being from the standpoint of being. And from the standpoint of being, I need to say things in a different way. I really want to convey the energy behind the vision. So to do this, I need to retell the story again. So you can imagine that we are sitting around a fire and I have come back from a great vision quest. And now I want to stand and wave and motion and jump and dance so that this same vision will come alive in you. Let us begin beyond name and form from the root of being 
and vision, the one silence within. Let me use words conveying the vibration of the vision to paint for you a picture of the process of divine being. Think of this not as a process occurring over millions of years, but as a pattern, even patterns within patterns, which embody the dance of the divine from the unmanifest to the manifest, a divine process of being which occurs each instant of manifestation. First, there was only being. The first quality of existence is being, resting beyond time. For so long, no one can imagine. Then within being arises an intention, a desire to know itself. And this knowing of the one way creates within itself the seeds of the many ways. This first form of knowing, the moving of being, is sound. Being wanted to hear itself. At first the sound is not as a discernible sound, but like a slowly rising roar coming up from silence. And now being has added the roar of silence to itself and being becomes sound of being, being sound. And being sound now begins to move, begins to wave, to wiggle into rhythm, like a wave breaking on the shore of consciousness, being washing over itself as being. And then to change the tone behind the rhythm, within that wave, from one tone to many tones, from one thunder of the wave to the many thunders within. And for an instant, and in the eternity within that instant, being sound moves within, before, and over itself. And being sound wiggle moves out more from within, before itself, to within, upon itself. Being sound wiggle senses that it has formed the moving waters of life from the center of its beingness. And from this rushing, waving sound, being creates a set of waves as a foundation for another stage of its intention. Being sound wiggle now wants to see itself. And being sound wiggle moves faster upon itself. It has become a bubbling sphere of the waters of life. And as it moves with clear intention, small droplets spray out in a fine mist in all directions out from the center of being. Each small droplet, each small sphere holds within it a copy of being sound wiggle. Each small droplet is a complete miniature of the great mystery. And being sound wiggle moves so fast that light is created from itself. And this light shines out from being sound wiggle light and billions of rainbows shine out. This light emerges from the center and passes through the tiny spheres of light around itself and in the connection of the waters to themselves and the light to the waters, vision is born. And this vision from being sound wiggle light rainbows shines out to the edge of the known and forms beautiful shapes like patterns and templates of light. Moving through the branches and leaves of this divine party which are formed from this tree of life. 
if you look at each leaf very closely, really look, you will see inside each little leaf the original intent of being's original self. The original being now reaches out as being sound wiggle light tree. And this entire arrangement, the core light, the sphere of being, the water of light droplets, the rainbow light shining out forms a greater image of this tree of life and light. And this vision can only be seen by one who is connected to their core being. For only being can see being. Only one who is awake can see the awake. From the perspective of a visionary, a mystic, a vision is not separate from you. You are the vision. You cannot see that which you are not. You can only see a sacred vision if you have tuned your being to the sacred. And even this tuning of your being to the sacred is not an outward task. Tuning to the sacred is a turning and tuning within. Any sacred activity is sacred because it turns you to the sacred being within. Do you know what vision is? Vision is the reception and perception of unmanifest being from the perspective of manifestation. You are the vision and the vision is you. This entire picture we just described this play of being forms the reality that we find ourselves in. Out from the core being, the many droplets of being arise. Each of us is a droplet, a small sphere of being dancing around the great sphere of being. We each have a unique placement, a unique perspective within the unity of the whole. Naturally, part of this conversation involves how to relate to this vision. Just remember that a vision is not a thing. A vision is being, having been perceived by itself through its own manifestation. If you ask most people about vision, you would get a similar story. For most people, a vision is something quite out of the ordinary. A vision is something that happens to them. And often, if they understand the vision, then they feel a need to do something about it. This understanding of the process of vision is not wrong, but it could be augmented by a deeper understanding. All vision arises out of the unmanifest ground of being, and the vision is the perceived motion of the divine intention into manifestation. When a vision is perceived, it helps for it to be anchored into manifestation. Often we do something, some action after we've received a vision to help stabilize it into our manifestation and experience. In my own case, in the receiving the vision, I entered the peace chamber at Swananoa immediately after the sun moon dance. The peace chamber is an excellent way to connect to being and vision. Let me explain how I used the process in the peace chamber. My intention after my vision was to reconnect with the vision. There was too much information, too much being, too much detail. Even though everything in the original vision appeared in an instant, there were too many aspects that needed to be digested. Just as food needs to be digested, visions need to be digested. That vision needs to enter your blood and bones. Eventually, even the exhalation of your breath will carry the vibration of the vision. So, in order to bring up the resonances of the vision again, we can use silence and sound. We can use motion and rest. We can use chanting and sacred dance. It is usually the case that we use silence or sound or movement to connect with vision in the first place. 
It is also through these dynamics of silence, sound, and movement that the vision as a perceived aspect of ourselves is made manifest again. Remember, any vision is a being and is being. A vision is not a thing. A vision is the living being glanced. When we perceive that divine being, it's like being flashed a hologram full of information quicker than an instant. That vision, that being in the unmanifest, transcends time and space and somehow, through grace, has been perceived by an aspect of itself standing in the manifest. All vision is transformative because life is transformative. Life is vision. Vision is life. Now, because vision is life, we should remember that life, like the ocean, has its own ebb and flow. After a vision and after some anchoring, we need to ebb. We need to relax our hold on the vision because the process of a vision has its own life dynamics. A vision is like a seed sown into us as the earth. A vision is also like a whale that has appeared on the surface and again dives deep beneath the waves. A vision is also like the rain that seeps down into the furthest cracks and recesses of our being. If we want to allow the vision to develop, we have to love it enough to let it go. And then, with a timing too mysterious to predict, the vision, having been gestated inside of us, re-emerges. The vision we earlier let go now becomes like the whale breaching above the waves. And now the vision has become a tall tree sprouting out of the earth and giving shelter and nourishment to ourselves and to those around us. Since the vision is life, the vision follows the same process of life as the original vision I am describing here. So as I'm speaking these words to you, I want to encourage you to use wisdom regarding being and vision. Yes, this is a process of the manifestation of being and vision that we are talking about. But do not perceive this process as mechanical or something outside of yourself. This process is of being manifesting as vision. This is the process of you. You are the sacred being who embodies the sacred intention to be. And when the sacred intention to be comes into full manifestation, that brings forth a marvelous condition called unity. Practically speaking, how you process vision is entirely a personal matter. Spend some time to listen to and reflect on my understanding of the process of being. And then look inside to observe how the process of being works within you. When the vision wants to slumber, then perhaps slumber with it. When the vision wants to dance, then be prepared to dance. Now let's look at this process of being and vision, this dance of life, in terms of the important topic of peace. Peace is not some thing that you can make happen in the world. If vision is not a thing, can peace be a thing? Peace is not a thing you can build. Peace is not a thing you can hold. Peace is a quality of being just like vision. The totality of the vision of being is unity. The being of peace exists within the being of unity. All of the great mystics, the visionaries, have seen aspects of this same truth. That fundamental truth is the one being behind everything. That being, having moved from the unmanifest to the manifest, forms a composite unity. You could say that the mystics, the great teachers, 
have seen unity of being as the true state of existence. And this vision is not just for the mystics. This vision is for everything. Unity is the reality of everything. And because there is only one being, everything is already in unity. It's just our realization of this that is still in the process of manifestation. It has been said that as a person thinks, so they are. And I have realized that if you can attune yourself to any quality of being, you become that quality. If you attune yourself to some great master, then your consciousness cannot help but become impressed with their vibration. And then your thoughts become influenced by their thoughts. Your realization begins to become their realization. This is the divine hermetic law of correspondences. And the same process of realization is at play in the world today regarding the manifestation of peace and unity. Peace and unity are qualities of being. So we realize peace and unity from our becoming saturated from the inner effulgence of being. What the world needs now is not more things, but more being. Realization of being brings an increase of consciousness. And the outcome of greater consciousness, greater being, will naturally be unity and peace. So for unity to manifest, it must be founded on the realization of being. And if we are plugged into being and unity then qualities such as peace and love will naturally appear like blossoms on the trees in springtime. And our job is not to try and push these leaves out. Our function is to feed on the sap of the essence of our being. If we have not realized peace today, it is because we still do not have enough people who realize that they carry the divine being inside. We need more people who from realization of being then live out the manifestation of the qualities of being. You see, this is an automatic process, just like flowers after the rain. If you live realizing your core is being, then your circumference of manifestation will be peace and unity and love. This same dynamic is true regardless of the scale. Be it one individual, or a country, a planet, a galaxy, or a universe. Being within brings forth peace and unity into manifestation. It is very important for you to always remember that you are a manifestation of the great being. If you focus on your inner beingness, then you are connected to the great powers of being and of manifestation. The techniques you use can vary. Just realize that when you're doing your favorite meditation, yoga, or vision quest, that the one who is doing is pure being. Start from there. The Hindu saying, Tat Vam Asi, you are that, you are being. Then slowly over time, the concentration of being within you will transform your living. You will find less of your living composed of actions and doings. Rather, your inner orientation will be a life of being. And then anything you need to do is a natural outflow of that being. There is one more thing to say about the immersion in being. If you can spend time focused on your essence, which is being, a wonderful transformation is initiated. Within this entire process of the vision of being, it is the absorption of being which is fundamental. If you are familiar with Hindu or Buddhist philosophy, then you know the doctrine of karma. Karma is the manifestation of reciprocity regarding past actions, past doings. But in that instant, beyond space and time, when you are focused on the isness of being, there is no doing. By continuing to return to the practice of absorption of being, your sense of being will increase. Your presence of being 
will remove the clouds and obscurations from your central sun of being. As the central sun of being fills your awareness, the light of being shines through you. And the shining light of being changes the old patterns, the samskaras. If the light of realization is sufficiently bright, it will rearrange your energetic presence to the point of burning anything that is not being, including karma. So the benefits of the practice of immersion in being are great, and the practice is easy. Now let's briefly restate this entire process of being that is expressed in the vision. We can group this process into steps to help our mind organize what we are feeling intuitively. And we can use this process not only to understand being and vision, but also as a template to give us greater clarity in life. In the briefest summary of this process, this vision is the progression from unmanifest unity of being to manifest unity of being. The steps in this process of being are harmonic progressions. This movement is in harmonies of being. And these steps are available to us because we are also a harmonic of being. We carry the unmanifest being within and we have the power to manifest. So here are the steps that you can use to align yourself with the process of being and manifestation. This orientation, this process can be useful when you have an intention that you want to manifest. All vision, all sacred intentions involve being. Your intention can simply be to realize your own beingness. And this is a great place to start. So, at step one, we first start with being. Being begins in silence. So connect inwardly, deeply, to the unmanifest being in silence. Whether in meditation, sitting in silence, or other methods, approach and enter into the silence within. Within the silence, realize that the center that is inside of you, that space of emptiness, is connected to the center of being everywhere. Then remain for some time just resting. Leave the outer world, the outer mind, somewhere above where you are. Reach deep into essence. At step two, having rooted in silence, we have become grounded in our truth of being. The truth we carry is unmanifest being. We are connected to the great being behind all manifest creation. We next reconnect with the original intent. And what is the original intent? Unity that we all may be one because we are one. And being energizes the sacred intention for being with the qualities of harmony and unity. The seeds of unity are present in the divine intention of the divine being. And this unity starts with personal unity, personal integration. Realize the integration of your feelings heart, thoughts, and emotions. Let your intention, your desire for unity, take root in you through sacred silence. And then let that intention seep into your being. Allow the central sun of your being to resonate with that intention. And let being shine that intention into every part of your being. Your mind, heart, emotion, will, your breath, and out to your blood and bones. At step three, at this phase, it is time to bring being and intention into vibration. So with our core rooted into the center of being and with our intention rising from this core, Allow the sacred intention to emerge into the manifest world first through your breathing in 
and breathing out. Your breath is the vibration of being made manifest. Then, when you are ready, open to the manifestation of being through sound. With your intention riding the core energy of being, let the sounds come through you. And you can use any form of sound that embodies your intention. It can be drumming or clapping or toning or chanting, humming, playing musical instruments. Realize that the sounds you make are powerful conveyances carrying your intention into the manifest world. You can imagine the tones coming through you are like ribbons of light. And those ribbons of light are carrying the vibrations of unity on them. Realize that in that instant of your resounding, your motion from the unmanifest to the manifest is occurring at the same instant as the original moving of being. In that original moving of being, of its intention into vibration and then sound, you were there. You were there doing what you are doing right now. And you are riding that same wave of manifestation with all the other waves of manifestation coming out from the one being. Your movement of being into manifestation as sound is occurring in eternity. At step four, at this phase, it is time to revision. Realize that the sounds that you send out into the manifest are forming patterns. These patterns are connections that are formed from your inner being to other forms and beings in the manifest world. So let your intention now form pictures of unity in your mind. You can think of beautiful landscapes, people living on the earth in harmony and balance. You can add happy visions of yourself and loved ones dancing in joy. These visions are being carried out on the wave of sound and they are carried forward into manifestation. Allow the sound to move out and revision, re-template, reshape your inner and outer world. At step five, to bring about greater coherence, greater alignment between the inner and the outer, then add sacred movement, even sacred dance. It is through sacred movement that we allow ourselves to loosen up, to break, the patterning, the forming that we have held on to that may not be according to the sacred intention of the now. Through movement, through sacred dance, we complete the movement from the unmanifest to the manifest. With each motion, each step, the sacred circle, the spiral of life, circles around again. With each step, being reaches out into the manifest and brings forward more harmony through you. Your footsteps in this sacred dance are the steps of the divine being. The footsteps of the divine being upon the earth cause the earth to respond with its own vibrations and songs of joy and unity. Each step of being upon the earth produces rings of harmony that roll out in all directions. With each step, you are changed. With each step, the world is changed.
Now we come to part two of the Peace Callers, working with being and vision in the Peace Chambers. We have talked about the vision of being moving from unmanifest unity to manifest unity. Remember that this movement is a being and not a doing. The mystic, the visionary, always looks beyond the outward to the inward. To look beneath what appears, to see the unity behind everything, is to awaken in life. Let's use this orientation to enter the sacred domain that the peace chambers reside in. Let's start with some examples regarding the shape of a peace chamber. Shape is one of the first qualities of manifestation of being. Look up into the expanse of space. In the wide openness is a vast reality of pregnant possibility. Whenever there is a space, a void, a womb, that space connects directly to the qualities and powers of the great being. The open center is a space of mystery. The center of the open space is a gateway beyond time and space. Though it seems to contain nothing, it contains everything. The space that appears to be silent emptiness carries within it fervent being. So the mystic vision is immersed in what appears to be emptiness. Vision is born from the space, the emptiness of being. An emptiness so vast that it contains everything. Within your center, your heart, the entire universe dwells. To realize that you carry everything within, that you are connected to everything, you have to empty yourself. The mystic is one who knows the secret of emptying himself. The mystical way is to turn from outer doing to inner being. The visionary lives by holding the center as an open space. It is the open center to being that provides the space for us to vision. The empty open space forms a womb to manifest being. The old adage was not to do or not to do, but to be or not to be. When we approach the peace chamber, we enter from the perspective of being. We are being. The peace chamber is being. A peace chamber shares similar qualities of being as we do. There really is only one being. The peace chamber is an echo, a singularity which formed directly from the great being. In other words, peace chambers are not made as much as birth. From a basic understanding, a peace chamber is something built from certain materials. Some peace chambers are made of wood, some of concrete, some of other materials. If we know the history of the chambers, we could say that the chambers are the children of the vision that was given to Joseph many years ago. From the visionary viewpoint, the peace chamber is an echo, a reproduction, a child out of the great being itself. The chambers are sacred bubbles creating voids of imminent potentiality. Inside a peace chamber is a place of no place and of all places. Inside a peace chamber is a domain beyond space and time. It is a living being forming an outer resonant shell for beingness. A peace chamber is a temple of being. When you enter a peace chamber, you enter a space where you can connect to your own beingness. In the sacred space between your body and the walls of the peace chamber, you have a sacred space-time that you can interact with. The peace chamber becomes an extension of the body and being of the universe. And this sacred space-time contains all sacred space-times. The space in the peace chamber is the same space there within you. All space can be sacred because it allows being. From the perspective of the physical earth, the peace chambers with sacred sites form a network of blessing. These blessings of being include vibration, vision, and unity. Each sacred site, each peace chamber, 
is connected to a set of unity cords that are part of a larger network of being. This sacred network of being reaches across the planet and beyond. If you come to a peace chamber alone or together with a group of other people, you should be clear on the intention for your coming. The setting of being with intention that you have formed within yourself and among yourselves becomes a sacred web, a network of being. Shared sacred intention of being is like a set of sacred geometries that are reaching out into different scales from the unmanifest to the manifest. These sacred cords connect you to the chamber, the chamber to the earth, and other chambers, and ultimately back through all of manifestation to the unmanifest. In other words, because you have aligned your heart with the divine process of being and manifestation, you have formed harmonics of unity within you, and in joining with others, you have formed a larger fractal set of harmonics of unity among your group. Whenever we approach a peace chamber, we should do so in full awareness of being. It may be helpful to most people to acknowledge the spiritual energies and guardians of both the land and the chamber itself. Stop for a moment at the door of the chamber before entering, and then carry your intention forward in silence. This is a very powerful way to start. Then, by walking forward into the peace chamber, you take sacred silence and intention forward into the sacred domain of being. And pay attention to everything as you enter the peace chamber, especially any sounds. As you enter the peace chamber, it will sing back its song of eternal unity to you. If the chamber echoes as you walk, then realize that the sound of each step goes out to and returns from eternity. If you track that echo, you will find yourself following the movement of spirit back into the unmanifest. You could spend an entire lifetime just following sound as it trails back into silence. And realize that any vibration, any sound that interacts with something, some being, becomes informed by that thing or being. After entering the peace chamber, take a moment inside and begin to tune into the energies that are present. We tune again into being. This time, the being we carry is being informed and nurtured by an aspect of being we have just stepped into. Here, nurtured within a sacred womb, again, tune inside and connect with being. Wait in the stillness and realize that the space around you is infinite. When you make a sound in the peace chamber, that sound reaches the wall of the peace chamber and travels at once to the edge of the universe and back. The edge of the peace chamber that you see is in a real sense the edge of eternity. You are not just in a space, but inside of all time. What you do here is very significant. If you sing into the walls of a peace chamber, the sound that comes back contains the essence of the peace chamber other peace chambers and sacred sites, and even the essence of the unmanifest being itself. All vibration affects all other vibration. All vibration affects everything in the manifest world. When you bring yourself, full of being, with sacred intention, into the peace chamber, and make sacred sounds, something wonderful occurs. The sounds you make are taken by the peace chamber and moved across the planet and beyond time and space, through all dimensions of manifestation. And these sounds are carried back into the heart of being, into the heart of eternity. If this aspect of the vision is too abstract, or if you don't live close to a peace chamber, then there is something you can do to step into the same reality again using a drum. Look at a drum. The shape of a drum mirrors the shape of the earth, the shape of creation, of eternity. The roundedness of the drum has no beginning and no ending. When you are playing a drum, you are playing an instrument of eternity. When you strike the head of the drum, the sound travels from the center of the drum to the edge, and a small echo travels back from the edge of the drum, returning to the center. 
in the instant the drum head is struck, that vibration, that sound, goes out not just to the edge of the drum. That sound travels beyond the speed of light to the edge of the universe. Each beat of the drum traverses the entire cosmos and returns. Every vibration, every sound also does the same. So in using a drum, the drum is a connector to the process of manifestation of being through sound. And you, even though you're not inside a peace chamber, if you tune into the drum and focus on your inner beingness, then you can enter the same reality of being. Because the realization of vision of the peace chambers is that you, dear friend, are a chamber of being, a peace chamber yourself. You carry the divine being and live out the manifestation of divine being. Now we come to the last part of this CD, the gathering of the peace callers. First we learn the process of unmanifest being moving into manifestation through being, intention, vibration, and sound. Second, we looked at using this orientation, this vision, in interacting with the peace chambers, and we realized that we ourselves are a chamber of peace. In this third section, I want to talk about the manifestation of being known as a peace caller. When being moves within manifestation, we experience space and time. The movement of being through time is like waves on the ocean. We can benefit greatly by knowing the movements of being through time. Let's say that you wade out from a beach into the ocean. You go out far enough that you can still stand touching the bottom, but the water is up to your neck. As you stand there, it should be clear to you that there is nothing that you can do to cause an incoming wave to occur, and there is nothing you can do to stop a wave either. So you have a clear choice as to what to do when a wave comes. What should you do? You harmonize with it. When a wave comes, you can push off the sand and jump up with the wave. And if you have a surfboard, then you can take this analogy to its ultimate manifestation. You learn how to ride the waves, how to surf them. That is the ultimate image of finding harmony with the waves. There is nothing we can do to change the world apart from paying attention to the movement, the wave of spirit. And then we learn to move as spirit moves. This move of the spirit into our dimension is called the field of manifest unity. And this field of manifest unity moves in patterns in waves. Many of you listening to this right now are already peace callers. Walking this path is walking the path of a visionary. A peace caller is one rooted in being, intention, vibration, sound, vision, and body movement. A peace caller is a mystic, and a mystic is one who realizes the underlying unity behind all manifestation. To be a visionary is to be rooted in the entire divine dynamics of what we earlier called the vision of being, sound, wiggle, light, rainbows. So a peace caller is a mystic who tunes into the visions of being and unity in order to live them into manifestation. Even if you did nothing outwardly, just carrying the vision, the vibration of unity, causes the manifest world around you to become harmonized and entrained to the condition of being which births unity. The vision of the peace callers is a vision of community. Whenever people gather who are centered and rooted in being, holding sacred silence and intention, then begin to sound out and to move, then this vision comes into manifestation. For many years, the peace callers have already been doing their work. The peace chamber is a void of possibilities. The peace callers are the harmonizers. We are the peace chamber. We are the harmonizers. P.
peace callers embody the divine intent. Peace callers go in and go out to re-sing, re-vision reality.